Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today I'd like to welcome Elias Castillo, and Elias is the author of A Cross of Thorns, The Enslavement of California's Indians by the Spanish Missions. Welcome, and tell us what your book's about. Well, what it is, it's, uh, I'll tell you what it does. It shatters the image of California's missions as these wonderful idyllic places where the friars love the Indians and the Indians love the friars and Junipero Serra was just a, an angelic person. What and, kind of person was he? Uh, very twisted, very fanatical. He established very brutal, he established a brutal treatment of Indians and he didn't have to. He could have just said, all right, come on in and let's work together. But he didn't. He instead uh, he wanted them free of sin, and that meant that uh, there was a lot of restrictions, a lot of punishments involving whipping, um, putting the Indians in stocks for minor uh, infringes that no one would have cared about outside of the missions, and uh, and also because he forced them to change their diet. Uh, Prior to coming into the missions, the Indians lived on small animals, um, roots, um, and uh, some plants. But uh, all of a sudden, he ordered them enslaved in the missions, of which they could never leave. They were once inside, and he baptized them. They could never leave for the rest of their lives. Now, were they? captured and brought into the missions? Were they, how were they enticed, not enticed, but how were they forced and enslaved in, to build the missions? Uh, yeah, what happened was that initially when the Indians first saw them and saw, my gosh, look at those tools and look at those saws. We need some of those uh, tools and some saws. And um, they decided, gee, it would be good to have some of that material for ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like it'd be fun to live in with them. Well, it turns out that that's what they thought. But the reality was that uh, once the, uh, the ones in the missions, they were taught, the uh, friars taught them how to make sounds. You know, it could be, to them, it was just gua gua. And, but to the friars, it was maybe the, the first letters of our Lord's Prayer. And that's how they, they, they did not know what they were saying because they, they didn't know Spanish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have time to um, learn it. All, all they were taught was, let's have them recite the Lord's Prayer or uh, the, uh, the Rosary. And they would teach them how to do that and then another friar would come in and then verify that they were in, f that the sounds were similar, were like the Lord's Prayer. Once they had done that, then they were quickly baptized. Once they were baptized, they could never leave the missions. Oh, wow. Either their children, neither their children, or their wives, or their children's children. So they were there for, you know, f forever. And what, ha what eventually began happening was that um, because the Indians were not immune to European diseases, 
they quickly were contaminated by the Europeans that were there. Now these are uh, measles, mumps, influenza, colds. They had no immunity to all of those. And so they quickly began dying. Um, and, the, uh, uh, and if they didn't want to work, well, that's tough. Sarah's attitude was, yes, you will work, and if you don't work, we're going to whip you. And they did whip them severely um, for infringes that no one would care and about. And if they wanted to leave? They couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't because they would kill them. They were, they were Spanish. No, they wouldn't kill them. They would just punish them severely, whip them 30, 30 40 times, including women. And there was one thing about it, one rules is that women are never whipped in public but are taken to a faraway place that their screams may not incite the men to riot. And that's how they, you know, they, they, they felt. They, they knew they were doing wrong, mm -hmm. that these were uh, people that had done nothing. And then the, here's the other thing about this. The governors of California, every single of them, were opposed to the missions because they felt the friars, including Sarah, were not educating the Indians. They, were, they were not teaching them how to read or write so that they could survive in the coming uh, settlement of California. And um, so the, the um, uh, and without reading or writing or arithmetic or basic education, they were helpless. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even count. No. And, um, and then of course they were periodically hit with these epidemics and they would wipe out half the, half the mission. And each mission, eventually, Sarah founded nine missions and eventually there were 21 missions. Um, once the 20, uh, you know, the mission, the 21 missions were founded after Sarah died in 1864. Um, but um, the, uh, the the fact is that the uh, each mission had about uh, maybe 1,200 mission, you know, Indians, and they had a, they had enormous, huge, vast land holdings. So were most of them up in, well, I'm not that familiar mm -hmm. with where the missions are, but did he found the missions that were in this area? Is that why he's in Cupertino up on the freeway or someplace out there? No, For the statue? He, uh, he founded nine missions and uh, they were scattered all over. Uh, California. All over, no, all over oh. the Bay Area, just the, the Bay Area. Okay. The missions were founded from, uh, here's San Francisco, and here's San Diego. The missions were founded between San Francisco and San Diego. <laughs> wow. Okay. And all 21 of them. And some of them were a little bit, most of them were close to the coast. Now, why do you think the story's been changed so many times over the years to the point where it's glamorized and in schools they have the kids build missions? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it, that's because of the big lie, and that's what I'm going to call it from now on, the big lie. In 1880, uh, land developers and real estate types wanted people to come to California from the East Coast. So at that time, around that time, a um, woman uh, uh, wrote a book called Ramona, and it was the story of an Indian couple, and she had written it because she had written Uncle Tom's Cabin and wanted to write something similar because of the tremendous racism and prejudice against the California Indians. So she wrote this book, and uh, the, the couple are just subjected to racism and insults uh, from the local populace, uh, some of which were white, some of them which were Mexican, some of whom were uh, sp Spanish. And what they did was the couple, Ramona and her, I forget the name of her, of her husband, but they went to a mission and they wanted to talk to the priest there about, can you help us? Can you help us in our plight? Because we have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Because the missions had taken all their family and all their ancestors mm -hmm. into the mission. They had died without leaving, without leaving any trace of their ancestral homes. And so once that link was broken, 
the Indians who came out of the missions in 1833 really had no place to go because their homes had all been taken by settlers. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of their customs had just simply dissolved because they put Indians from all tribes in one. In each mission, there were Indians from every tribe. Right. And it was very difficult to keep their own customs and their languages and the, st and the history of their story. Mm -hmm. They uh, had an uh, oral tradition. So right, everything right. that they knew was, was taught to the children, and then they would carry it on. But that wasn't happening in, um, in, in, Cal in, the, in the California missions. And um, th that fact really wiped out tribes that we still don't know anything about. They've just been wiped out as if they had never existed, as if they had been on another planet. No one knows anything about these. They wiped out the entire they, history they, of the tribe. <coughs> yeah, they, they wiped out the members. Uh, they wiped out anything pertaining that there had ever been a tribe. And these were small tribes. Um, and so what Sarah imposed was this very unhinged attitude that he could punish the Indians just as uh, they did in Peru. He's, one time the uh, uh, Governor uh, uh, Neve uh, asked uh, Sarah, why are you mistreating the Indians like you do? He says, and, uh, and this is in the book too. And uh, he um, answered, well, wh wh what do you mean? You know, we're just following the uh, example of, of, of uh, Saint Francisco Sonoma, who did the same thing against the natives in Peru. And if yeah. he had them in, in the missions, and then if they did something that they disappointed him, then he would whip them. So we're using these tried and true methods. And there's nothing wrong with using that, which were used by a saint himself. Well, the, the problem with that is, one, the extreme cruelty with which it was done. People were lashed up to 40 times, received 40 lashes. 10 lashes is the maximum you can receive. And with 10 lashes, it, it's just like having a, a razor blade push it into the skin and then wipe right down. It, it cuts oh a very God. wide wide gap about that, and, it, and you bleed a lot. 50 lashes oh. would just about kill you. And, uh, and oh, and children, at, at the age of 10, children could also be whipped. Oh, my goodness. And uh, they, needed, they were considered adults. So you can imagine what did. Uh, in 1786, a, uh, French, a French expedition uh, which was sailing uh, through the Pacific Rim to find for France what was there, who were the nations, what were the people like, so forth. They came to Carmel. And uh, one of the things, and they had doctors, you know, botanists, uh, teachers, and, all that. and one of the things that the doctors found out is, you know, they were examined, given it children, just mm -hmm. regular exams, they found that virtually every 10-year-old had a hernia, <gasps> which meant that they were being forced to carry loads that they could not carry. And in the book, I said, well, you know, th th these hernias, even in the, in the 1700s, could easily be cured. Might be painful, but they could be easily cured with a very simple surgical uh, procedure. But uh, these children were going to grow up with these hernias that will probably get worse as they grew. This, this, you know, the friars didn't care. As long as the children appeared to be working fine, they, you know, they, were, they were all right. So, mm -hmm. uh, Junipa Serra, now was he like the main yeah, he was a person with the missions then? Right. Or? He was uh, uh, considered the Padre Presidente. He was in charge of all 21, eventually of all nine missions that he established. And he set the policies. Mm. There was nothing, absolutely nothing, in the, in the uh, commands to him 
that he enslaved the Indians. But that was, that was himself. That was he. He said, all right, we'll enslave the Indians, and this will guarantee that when they die, we'll keep them free of sin, and they will go to heaven. And so that's, that's how they excuse it away? That's I mean, how, how they excuse it. it. That's, that's how they excuse it. Yeah, that's how they excuse it. We've got to keep them free of sin. Uh, every single woman uh, over the age of 10 and women whose husbands were away from the mission itself working out in some faraway area uh, were required to be locked in a large room called a convento which maybe had two buckets for uh, a bathroom. And uh, so that might include maybe 100, 150, 250, 300 women packed uh, into these rooms. Well, you can imagine two buckets that these were basically producing bacteria. And that's how the plagues got, the plague uh -huh. got started because you packed the, all these human beings into one little room and they had to sleep there at night. No one, very, very bad ventilation. And if one had a cold, by morning everyone would be affected. Or if they had uh, some other disease, European disease, um, they were all infected. And, that's, and then the next day, those girls or those women that had been in there then infected the rest of the population. And you had an epidemic. And it could, you know, take out the, uh, take out the entire uh, population in a few weeks. What made you want to do this book, write this book, and do this research? It was the right thing to do. And I felt California needs to have a true history of this. What happened, remember I was telling you about the, uh, the story of Ramona? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened is they went to the priest and they spent time in the mission and I think her name was Hunter Jackson um, and she wrote such a beautiful description of the mission that everybody thought, oh, these, these are wonderful things, except that now they were just piles of adobe brick and rotten timbers. And then someone got the idea, let's restore the missions for California and that'll attract people to come to California. And so who were the people that re helped restore with the Stanfords, Crocker, uh, uh, Randolph Hearst, um, all, the, all the, uh, the, the wealthy power brokers of... Uh, so it was a tourist attraction. It then. was a tourist attraction, mm -hmm. right. Come see, the, come see the missions. And of course, the friars that were left they didn't want to tell the truth about what had happened, but they, they knew darn well that underneath their feet there were thousands and thousands of bodies of Indians that had died there. And they kept it secret. They have kept it secret um, until now. It, it's, and it's not that it's out. It's, I, found, I spent seven years going through um, the documents of the missions and the... Um, and that's how I found it. It was a painstaking because I had to, re uh, there are books called The Writings of Junipero Serra. Mm -hmm. Every single letter he wrote is in that book. But in order to find out the material I needed to prove my point, um, I had to read every single letter <coughs> and study it very carefully. Mm -hmm. And then look through all the other letters. Maybe this was just a, something that it was a singular singularity, but no, it turns out that uh, uh, the more I read, the more uh, <coughs> I realized that these were brutal death camps, and they were brutal. And there's, there's no how could the Pope not know this? Well, th I mean that's, the, that's why I say, how can the Pope, Pope Francis, not know about this? Is somebody not telling him? Can I send him your book? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, this is something they should have in all the schools. Yes, right. You know, they need to start teaching history correctly, the right. correct history, and right. not the made-up, glamorized right. version. And the State Board of Education is at fault also. I for agree. decades, 
they have been teaching fourth graders how wonderful the Franciscans were and how wonderful Sarah was and uh, the missions were that they helped develop California. Well, they didn't help develop California. They did just the opposite. That's why the governors, the Mexican governors and the Spanish governors didn't want anything to do with the missions. They wanted them out of here because they took up the 20, eventually 21 missions and each of them maybe I estimate, I may be wrong, 300,000, 400,000 acres of land. They took the best land and they kept it from themselves. And their herds, which then trampled the Indians' food, um, San, let's see, San Juan Capistrano, uh, San, San, uh, San uh, Luis, Luis Rey de Francia was the, one of the missions down there. And they had a livestock herd. That includes all of the animals they had. That includes cows or cattle, horses, mules, um, goats of 35,000 head. And their, the cattle, the cattle herds, were maybe numbering up to uh, 25, 35,000. Even now, that's an enormous herd. Yeah, maybe the, the King Ranch, uh, which is a big cattle corporation, may have, may not even have close to that wow. many cattle. And so what they did was they uh, established a, um, um, a trade with the New England merchant ships that would come from, of course, New England. Mm -hmm. And they would buy up tallow, which was the fat from, right. from, from the hides. And that tallow was the only lubricant available. So for, for wagons, putting it on the axle so it wouldn't squeak, you put tallow on it. Mm -hmm. And the hides were used for leather, of course, which was, the, I guess you could say, the plastic of that time. And, uh, and then, let's see, what, oh, and then the horns were even used. They bought enormous amounts of horn because they could then be cut into combs and cover the backs of brushes uh, and other toilet articles. And so these ships would come in and they would buy enormous quantities of, of this. And then of course, and who got, who was enriched by these? The missions. The churches. And the, uh, and the fact you know, that the missions try to put across the story that the missions were very poor and that everything went for, to help the Indians. Well, that's not true because uh, in my research I found a description of uh, this merchant ship, merchant captain is in there and uh, he gets his gold coins out to pay <laughs> the, the priest and the priest says, oh no, 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 we can't do the We're Franciscans. We can't touch money and that's money. We, we, it would be, a, we, it's against our process. So the foreman is in the same room. And so the uh, priests, he, the, the merchant, then leaves. And <coughs> the foreman, he walks out with the foreman. And then he asks the foreman, what, what, what's this about the Franciscans can't touch money? He says, oh, don't believe them. What they do is, now that we're going, uh, they will take those gold coins into their bedroom. And they would throw them on the bed and count them, make sure that's all there, and then put them in their storehouse, and they're, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're safe. Or all just lies. A big, yeah, all, all lies. lies. Yeah. You mentioned that one of the mm -hmm. last, um, was it one of the last friars, they sent a letter to the Mexican government telling them, explaining what was going on in the missions? Earlier you oh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, Mariano Palleras, was the last Spanish. Okay. Uh, uh, pre Padre Presidente of the missions. And what the governors, I think it was Sola, uh, became very angry at the, at the missions. He said, now, the, you, are, you are in the midst of this terrible death toll that goes on continually in the missions. Now, I want this stopped. He just said, I want this stopped. And Payera said, that it, was, it was the death toll is so bad that the governor or did it stop? And what he said was that um, he wrote to a superior Mexico city and said, now we've got to stop this um, because 
or else we have to come up with an, ex an excuse to explain why so many Indians have died. And what we've got to do is find, he didn't say in so, so many words, I'm paraphrasing, we need to find an excuse as to why this is happening, because if we don't, we're going to be subjected to scorn and scandal. And we, uh, and we will be blamed for the death of all these, uh, all the heathendom that once populated the coast. He says, all we have done, all we have done is consecrate them, baptize them, and bury them. And now there are no more uh, Indians outside of the missions on the coast. We have, we have wiped them out, and they do not survive. Within a year, they're dead in the missions that, that we have now. And so that letter is critically important to the understanding that here was uh, the hierarchy, Father President of all the missions, all 21 missions, s blaming the missions for the deaths and the disappearance of the Indians. He said there are, there are very few Indians under the age of 20 in the mission. They just die. And it, it is uh, a shocker to me. Um, well, thank you for all of the work and research you've done. I know you've invested you. so many uh, years into this. And it's a book that everybody has to read. And get pe get the kids to read this in the high schools. And we need to get this and in the high schools. State Board of Education. Absolutely. Needs to I, and the other thing, too, Not is I've been graders. seeing a lot of um, petitions online to the Pope. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you know, he's like Hitler. How could you do such a thing, you know? Yeah, right. And as you see these petitions, sign them, send a letter, do what you can. Mm -hmm. Pick up a copy of A Cross of Thorns and read it. I can't wait to start reading it. Well, thank, thank you, you for mm -hmm. being sure. here. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you for joining us. And you can also pick up a copy at EliasACastillo.net. Uh, but make sure you read this book. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul.